Hey guys, it's Shannon. I'm one of the unit based educators here at Baylor St. Luke's. I'm just going to talk you guys through today how to use the 12 lead EKG machine and how to perform a 12 lead EKG on your patient. So we'll start first by putting the leads on the patient and then we'll move over to the machine and get that all ready to go. So first things first, you need to of course go in and explain the procedure to your patient, let them know that you're going to be putting some wires on them. And then you do need to expose their chest um, so that you can put the sticker right against the patient's chest. The stickers usually come in this front little pocket right here. If you um, don't have any in there, you can call Central Supply and they should be able to send you some. They are called red dot stickers and you do need to put 10 stickers on the patient's chest, four limb stickers and six precordial stickers. I usually put my limb stickers on first because I know that they go on the arms and the legs. Ideally, we put these stickers on the patient's wrists and ankles. Uh, we want to put them as far away from the heart as possible so that we can get as big of a picture of the electrical activity as we can. We don't want to put the stickers on any bony prominences, any dressings. We don't want to put them over any um, areas that the skin looks um, different if they've had a burn or something like that. We want to make sure that it's nice soft skin and we're not putting it over any tendons or anything like that. They also need to go equal um, bilaterally. So if your patient has an IV dressing on their wrist and you need to move up the arm, then you need to put the opposite lead on the same spot on the other arm. You can't have one on the wrist and one on the forearm. So those are my wrist stickers. Um, the next thing, of course, this patient does not have any legs, so I would normally put it on the inside of the ankle, just above the ankle bone, but I'm gonna put my leads right here on this patient because she does not have any ankles. I'm placing my tabs down, uh, facing towards the person's feet. That just helps um, when you put the leads on so that the leads don't, um, the weight of them peel the lead down and undo all the hard work that you're doing right now. Next, I move to my precordial lead. So I have six remaining. The first lead that you're going to put on if you're doing a left-sided chest EKG is lead V1. So you're going to find the patient's sternum, you're going to come down and you're going to be palpating for the spaces between the ribs. We wanna find the fourth intercostal space, which is usually about in a line with the nipples. And we wanna put that sticker just on the inside of the sternum. Again, we're trying to avoid any bony prominences and any dressings or anything like that. Lead V2 goes just on the other side of the sternum, on the left side of the chest, fourth intercostal space. The next one I put on is V4. I skip over V3 because we can come back to that one easily. V4 has a very distinct landmark. We go mid clavicular line, fifth intercostal space. So again, it kind of intersects the nipple going in the up and down direction this time. If you're putting an EKG on a woman, as you know, they have some anatomy that you need to work around. So you'll just have to come down and place that sticker underneath the breast tissue. Again, mid clavicular line, fifth intercostal space. This is lead V4. Lead V6 we actually need to come way out into the mid auxiliary line on our patient and we're going fifth intercostal space there as well. Uh, V6 is the next one I put on because again, V5, we will come back to it. It just goes between V6 and V4. We got to get it out nice and wide. The mistake that we see people make often is they put V6 right here and we're missing this whole chunk of uh, electrical activity within the patient's heart when we put V6 too close to the other V leads. I then backtrack and I place V5 right in between V4 and V6. I'm still in the fifth intercostal space. And then I backtrack and I place V3 in between V2 and, or V3 and V2, pardon me. Um, V2 and V4, let's try that for a third time, um, in the fifth intercostal space. So those are your precordial leads. Your patient is now ready for you to move over to the machine, get the machine ready and hook that up. So your machine, you should have a machine on your unit. You want it to be plugged in at all times so that we have some battery power um, so that when we take it into the room, we don't necessarily have to plug it in. It's gonna be alive for us to do our job. You'll flip the, it open, press the power button, and the screen will light up and come to life for you. Once the screen lights up, the first thing that we need to do is put in our patient information, of course. So you'll grab a patient sticker or you'll have Epic open next to you so that you can do your um, two patient identification and verifications. You'll go into patient data, which the F keys along here correlate with these buttons here. You'll press F1. F1 will open up a menu and this has the names of all of the past patients that have had EKGs. We don't want to do a EKG on any of these patients. We want to do a new one. So we'll go over to F6 return and that will pull up a fresh screen where we can type in our patient's information. We'll um, be making up a patient today, obviously. So um, I'm just going to type in the patient's last name. I will then go over here and hit my return key, or I can press the center on my um, toggle key here. I'll hit enter again. The ID number is the MRN number. 
I'm just going to put a fake one in right now because Snow White is not a patient here, but normally that would be the patient's MRN. It's very important that you get that correct so that the EKG uploads to Epic and links to the patient's profile. Next, I will go down um, date of birth is our second patient identifier. So you have to go in twice to this menu. You hit enter once, you have to hit enter again to get into the month menu, and then you scroll down with your school keys. I miss putting her date in so I can easily go back and correct it. I just hit my enter key again. and enter, we'll put that information in. The rest is just bonus information. If you have time to put it in, put it in. If you don't, then if, if it's an emergency especially, just keep hitting enter and move through until you get to your technician ID. This must be put in. If it's not put in, then you can't go forward with doing the 12 lead. You'll either put your uh, CHI number in or you'll put in your first and last name, whatever works better for you. I'll then hit enter and enter again till I get to my return button. Once I get to return, then I see my patient's information and MRN loaded up at the top and I know that I'm ready to perform my EKG. I'll come over to my leads here. So when you look at your leads, there's two areas that will state which lead goes where. You can't trust what's written on the end of these because we can replace these and move them all over the place. You must go off of what is written on the box in order to get accurate um, EKG leads placed in the right spot. So if you just set them kind of by your patient's hip on the bed, everything should reach where you need it to go. Everything is ordered on here, which is nice. It's ordered from right side to left side um, and your V leads in the middle. This is by far the most time consuming part of doing your 12 lead, organizing the spaghetti. So you'll come over here. I know that this correlates to my right leg lead. Remember, it is not your right leg, it is the patient's right leg. So if you're facing the patient, you must go opposite. So this is Snow White's right leg right here. I'll clip my lead onto the end there. The next one is her right arm. So again, I will come over, clip my lead onto her right arm. V1 is next. Again, remember you're going off of the box. You're not going off of what is written on the end of the lead. V2 is next. V3. Moving over to our next side here, we'll start in order. V4. V5, V6, and then we have Snow White's left leg, and we have her left arm. Prior to placing any of the leads on your patient, you want to make sure that their skin is clean, it is dry, if they have hair, that you've shaved the hair, that you have to have good contact of your uh, electrode pads with the patient's skin or else you will not get a good tracing. Once we've attached her all up, we're going to ask her to hold nice and still. We're going to double check that all of our leads are sitting flat. Do you see how V6 here is kind of flared out? We want to reposition that so that it's nice and flat. Otherwise, we're not going to get a good tracing there. So you just kind of have to MacGyver your wires a little bit and make everything look nice and flat. Then we'll come over and look at our screen. Of course, poor Snow White doesn't have um, a heart that we can look at, but we want to make sure that lead one has a positive QRS complex. AVR has a negative QRS complex and that we see tracings on all of our leads here. Once we're happy with that, we'll ask her not to talk and not to breathe, to hold still for about 10 seconds if she can tolerate it. And then we'll go over here and we'll hit our ECG button. We'll then hit continue, and then we'll get a nice printout here of our ECG. That has also saved a screenshot of your ECG in the machine, which takes you over to your next step, which is actually transmitting that EKG. By transmitting the EKG, it will upload to the patient's chart and it will also be billed to the patient so that we can make some money. Yay, we all love money, right? So after you've printed it, you'll go over to main menu. You'll then go into more because we don't see file manager here and we need to see file manager. Right here, 
um, we have file manager, we'll hit F5. File manager brings up again, all of the EKGs that are within this machine that have not been transmitted. We did one on Lady Gaga yesterday, so she's still there. We didn't transmit it. So we'll hit our select key, F1. That highlights the patient. We don't wanna do Lady Gaga though, we wanna do Snow White. So we'll use our toggle key to go down to Snow White. We'll hit enter. That grays that line out. That means that that one is selected to be transmitted. Your next step is of course to hit F4 transmit. I'm not gonna actually do it because I don't want to transmit this EKG. But once you hit F4, the Wi-Fi should take the EKG and transmit it down to non-invasive cardiology. If you have a machine that needs to be wired, a dial screen will come up and it will dial up like old school internet. That means that you need to have a telephone wire that you place in the side here and goes into a dedicated phone port on your unit and someone hopefully will know where that is so they can help you out with that. That is your last step that will take the ECG, put it into Epic so that whenever doctors come by, if they wanna see it, it will be available to them. And then if someone runs off with your beautiful printout, it doesn't matter because you have a nice electronic copy. That's it guys, I hope that helps and have fun doing all the 12 leads.